welcome to First Chapter Friday. My name is Lucy, and the book that I will be reading the first chapter of today is called Sweetness All Around, and this is by Suzanne Supley. This book was published in 2023, but the story takes place in 1974, so 50 years ago, and it centers on a 10-year-old girl who's about to turn 11 named Josephine. She has just moved into a trailer park with her mother and she's very unhappy about this. The trailer park is called Happy World, though Josephine does not think it is. She and her mother were living in an apartment. Josephine's mother makes her living through sewing textiles for people's homes. And there was a fire at the warehouse where everything that her mother worked with was kept. So they have lost everything. They lost their apartment. That's why they're in this trailer park. And Josephine's mad about that. She makes a friend, Lisa Marie, who has lived in this trailer park pretty much her whole life. She lives there with her grandfather and her great uncle, I guess he is. And then there is a woman who lives in the trailer park whose daughter, Molly, was kidnapped a little over a year ago, kidnapped by her own father and her father's mother, so her grandmother. Though Josephine has this good friend right there, Lisa Marie, she and Lisa Marie are different. They come from different backgrounds. And there is a lot about Lisa Marie that really grates on Josephine. Josephine expects perfection from her in some ways that she can't provide. And Josephine becomes obsessed with finding Molly and she wants to solve this mystery. So this book has this little element of what happened to Molly and where is Molly. One of the things I loved about this book, it talks so much about friendship, but it really shows the highs and lows. This book talks about removing judgment and really getting to know someone and looking at what is going on in someone else's life to try and understand why they might act the way they do. And Josephine as a main character is really interesting because she's not perfect and she doesn't always make the decisions that you wish she would make. Sometimes she gets a little bit infuriating. It's interesting as a reader to understand how she's not being kind or not being nice but you're going on this journey with her and she's really unforgettable and a great heroine. So I will now read the first chapter of Sweetness All Around. One, this. I'm leaving, Mary Josephine Willoughby said. She stood by the open door waiting for Mama to respond. Without even turning to look at Josephine, Mama said, close the door behind you and don't go far. Then she added, and don't talk to strangers. A small brown moth floated into the trailer, then seemed to change its mind and floated out again. Josephine's fingers itched on the knob. Her teeth were gritted. A hot tide of anger surged inside her. Since yesterday's yard sale, when Mama sold nearly everything they owned, everything, including the dang TV, Josephine had been feeling this way, like she was just barely hanging on to a rope a rusty pipe fixing to burst, a girl at any second who would begin to scream and never stop. Mama's full attention was on the Singer sewing machine, something not sold at the yard sale because Mama earned her living as a seamstress. Josephine squinted and said in the hatefulest voice she could muster, I'm not five years old. You can't tell me who I can talk to. You're not even sorry for ruining my life. The whir thump of the machine stopped and Mama turned around. You, Mary Josephine are on my last nerve today. And if you don't want to be treated like a five-year-old, stop acting like one. After everything that's happened, surely you can manage some grace. Josephine glanced around the terrible room. This, this was where she lived now. I can't stay here, she said. I won't and you can't make me. Mary Josephine, you know our circumstances are beyond my control. There was the slightest hint of pleading in her mother's voice. Josephine's grip on the doorknob loosened. She blinked. She waited for the pendulum of fate to swing in the other direction and put their lives back in order. And just to be clear, Mama went on, you are the one who should be sorry. Honestly, the way you behaved in that leasing office this morning, well, it was rude and completely uncalled for. Josephine let go of the rope burst the pipe, and did the things she'd been wanting, but also trying not to do. She stormed out and slammed the door behind her. It was a thunderous slam, so hard she expected the glass to shatter. It did not shatter. Through the now-closed door, Josephine heard Mama return to her sewing. Out on the highway, cars and trucks whooshed past. Nobody cares. It was a thought that made Josephine feel small and insignificant. 
like an ant crawling over the sun-parched earth. The ache of misery inside her was so strong, she wondered if her knees might buckle. Josephine stood still, waiting. Her knees did not buckle. In any challenging situation, there was usually an obvious thing to do. Read the instructions again, retrace your steps, try harder. Miss Lake, Josephine's teacher, was always asking students if they needed clarification. Josephine very much needed clarification, but Miss Lake had left on a trip to Maine for the summer. Even worse, Miss Lake was no longer her teacher because Josephine had been successfully promoted to fifth grade. Josephine sat on the splintery porch stoop and tried to put her feelings into words, something else Miss Lake encouraged. Her heart was like a wedge of cornbread somebody had crumbled into bite-sized pieces. It was like a shiny red Christmas ball. One minute it dangled and shimmered. The next it fell off the branch and shattered. Josephine imagined writing these similes in her journal a yellow spiral notebook with flower power stickers on the front, but her journal was inside the trailer and she wasn't about to go back in there and get it. Her brain swam home to Red Bud Avenue with its swaying trees and smooth sidewalks. On a hot day like this one, Josephine might sit in the living room where it was cool and watch game shows on TV or dig through her old wooden toy box and look at what all was inside it. Most of the toys were from when she was little, but it was fun remembering. The lid sometimes fell and smacked her on the back of the head, and for some odd reason, this made her miss the toy box even harder because it was sold now. All the toys inside it were sold too. Things that had kept her company her whole life, yet she had betrayed them. Technically, Mama had betrayed them. She was the one who'd sold them, and she'd sold the TV and their old clothes and shoes and coats, anything they didn't, absolutely need or frequently wear, all of it, gone. Not just their stuff, but their entire life was gone. A pretty life it had been. Mama's delicate dishes and brass candlesticks, even their polished furniture, gone. Josephine put her face in her hands. The worst thing that could happen to anybody had happened to her, and it gave her the heavy, suffocating feeling of lying beneath a thick wool blanket on the back of the green sofa. Except the wool blanket and the sofa were gone now too. The blanket Josephine didn't much care about, it was scratchy. But the sofa was the color of emeralds with feather cushions you could sink right into. Just yesterday, Josephine had watched two men put their emerald sofa on the bed of a truck and haul it away. Josephine could not stand to think about her lost life another second. She would walk, she would walk until she found clarification. She would walk until she formed a plan of action. Her brain was very good at that. And that is the end of chapter one. You can hear how well-written this book is. That's another thing I really loved about it. The writing is just really absorbing and the author does a great job writing it. In addition to the fact that Josephine loves similes. So she is writing throughout this whole book in this yellow notebook of hers. And she's always thinking of similes, even when she's not writing them down, sometimes correcting herself to think of a better simile or the right exact simile for a certain situation. In the first chapter, you can also see how angry Josephine is. And this anger sticks with her for a lot of the book and it comes up when she can't always control it. It can get ugly, but Josephine feels like she has lost everything all of her memories, everything that she grew up with, any sense of security she really had. She still has her roof over her head. She still has her mother, but everything else she knows is gone. And that is a lot to get used to. What Josephine starts to discover as she gets to know people in this trailer park is that everybody's got something on their plate and everybody deals with their struggles in their own way. But it really helps if you have people who are supporting you and helping you and being kind and loving you. And ultimately this book really is about friendship and hope with a little bit of mystery mixed in. So I really loved Sweetness All Around and I would highly recommend that you read it. Thank you for joining me.